Hi, um, I'm uh, Vicky Hill. I'm the Project Associate for Changing Mindsets and the Associate Lecturer for Thinking Teaching at University of the Arts London. And I'm delighted to welcome Dr. Gurnam Singh, Principal Lecturer at Social Work at Coventry University and a Visiting Fellow in Race and Education here at UAL. Um, so welcome. Hi. Thank you very much. Cool. Um, so, Gerna, we've been talking about um, the Changing Mindsets intervention and how there are um, student and staff facing workshops. Um, and we've been discussing more and more the pedagogical approaches to inclusive teaching practices. Um, so I've got a few questions to, to ask you about that. Um, and first of all, can I ask you to um, explain a little bit about how critical pedagogy has developed, really through the perspective of political, philosophical education, and then outline the key points for us? Yeah, absolutely. I think that really the starting point is um, even just to think about what does um, human being mean, and, you know, the, and the Latin is thinking being. Um, but the important thing was that the work of John Dewey, Wrote a book called Democracy in Education in 1916, uh, challenged this idea, a utilitarian idea of education, that somehow education is a means to an end, which is very much the preoccupation at the moment in higher education. And Dewey said education is not a means to living, but is identical with the operation of living a life which is fruitful and inherently significant. In other words, he was saying that education is life itself. So it's so profound, it's so kind of all encompassing. I think critical pedagogy really begins to connect all those dots. Uh, and so it do, it's, it's a non reductive view of education. Education is about making the self, education is about um, how we see ourselves you know, and how we locate ourselves in the world as much as anything else. And so also that in the politics of education, they begin to critique those con traditional constructs of education, the relationship between, say, education and schooling and schooling and capitalism the work of people like Bowles and Gintis was important there it's also you know it's about challenging uh, the way in which education is complicit in the reproduction of oppressive ideas of stereotypes of racist ideas if you like of the, even the notion that there's there is this thing called innate bounded human intelligence um, it challenges segregation the idea that somehow you know, all human beings are unique in a, in a critical pedagogy way. I always think of it a bit like kind of seeds, you know, seeds and flower beds. You know, all human beings have their own innate potential. So the idea of saying some things higher or lower uh, is antithetical to that kind of. And also challenging biological theories of deficit, cultural pathology, dysfunctionality. So it's kind of really, it's a very profound kind of challenge. And, and you know, it, it, and, and also you know, it's important to see the way in which um, people's life chances often are constricted by a particularly early education and achievement as if, um, you know, if you failed, say, you know, up to the age of 16 and that was it, you're, you're incapable of learning. So I think adult education and lifelong learning also is encompassed within this whole kind of idea of critical pedagogy. You know, it's the whole person, the whole being real. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you.